Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit's strong start is enough as Lion carries them to a crucial win. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And Scotty, we are very happy campers today, at least on the Red Wings side of uh, the Fisher Freeway, because they won a game and a crucial one at that to at least temporarily put them back into the second wild card. Now, by the time you're listening to this, this may be moot because the Capitals are playing the Senators today as well in the evening. But at least as of recording this, the Red Wings are in the second wild card, having picked up two big points. And wasn't a pretty win, but a strong start was all they needed. Yeah, no, and and we're not going to complain about wins at this point. You know? nope. <laughs> no matter who they're against, no matter how it looks. I didn't think it looked bad either. I, no. Buffalo, really, they got off to, the wings got off to a, a really hot start. Obviously, got out to the big league lead early. And then Buffalo just went, you know, pedaled to the floor and just went all out to try to, uh, get as many opportunities and as many shots on net to get back into the game. And obviously that wears on you throughout the uh, the game. But the Wings certainly had opportunities to even expand the lead, didn't take advantage really of any of those. But uh, some sound defense, some physical defense, obviously a couple of fights in this game, a lot of block shots you and I were talking about off air. Uh, great performance from Alex Lyon, which we know that this team kind of needs at this point to uh, consistently win hockey games. So. Yeah, uh, no, no complaints really. I mean, we'll we'll obviously give our, our analysis here and talk about what went right and what went wrong and whatnot. But uh, no complaints, solid effort, and uh, yeah, the, they got off to the the big league early. They were buzzing early, yeah, buzzing, buzzing that first five to seven minutes of the game, and uh, that was enough. So good job back in the wild card picture at the time of this recording, at least, and uh, you're setting yourself up for a, a really, really important week this week uh, with <laughs> two huge games, obviously Tuesday being against Washington. So, yeah, I mean, we talked in March about, you know, uh, what was the, what's the term do or die, I guess, in this yeah. instance, uh, back in March where you had a gauntlet of games that not even a gauntlet the opposite of a gauntlet. You played a bunch of sub 500 teams or teams on the outside, looking in, in the wild card, and they dropped like every single one of those games. Well, now you're presented with another opportunity against teams that are fighting for wild cards, but like beatable hockey teams. And you have won the first one against the Buffalo Sabres, which you didn't do back in March. And then the next two games, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself because we're trying to recap the Buffalo Sabres game, but Tuesday against the Washington Capitals, and then two days later on Thursday against the Pittsburgh Penguins, two teams that are neck and neck with you. One point ahead of the Penguins right now and two points ahead of the Capitals. As of recording this, they could tie you in points and thus take the wild card spot based on tiebreakers if they beat the Ottawa Senators. But, I mean, it's, it's a crazy important week. And th so it's great that they got off to a great start in this game. They played a fantastic first 20 minutes. And then Alex Lyon was able to shut the door for the last 40, which is something that we desperately needed from goaltending. Like we talked, right? And I guess beautiful transition talking to the difference makers, right? And my difference maker is Alex Lyon. And we talked a lot recently about how one of these two goalies kind of mirroring our conversation back in December, but one of these goalies has got to give this team a chance to win. And we said on, what was it Friday after the game against the uh, New York Rangers that he didn't really have his best game. Wasn't hundred percent his fault. Some awful plays or awful decision-making led to goals against, but they were on savable pucks. We thought in the end on the shot attempts that went behind him. Well, in this game outside of the Tage Thompson power play goal, nothing got past Alex Lyon on 38 shot attempts, 37 saves, for Alex Lyon in this hockey game, he was incredible. And outside of that game against the New York Rangers, he's on a stretch now where he's just, he looks hot again. 
And you need Alex Line to be hot right now because, well, I mean, we're six games to the end of the season trying to make the playoffs. It doesn't get more simple than that, really. So, I mean, Alex Lyon with a 1.88 goal saved above expected, nearly saved two goals more than expected in this hockey game, and a 9.74 save percentage, easily, easily one of the difference makers in this game. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that, as you alluded to there, we've been talking about for a long time. And when you look, it's very easy to kind of point and go, look, when goalie plays well, team plays well. But that does <laughs> seem to be uh, very, very... Uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, all I can think of is corresponding. That's obviously not right. Correlating. There we That's go. Hard. They do close <laughs> enough. You would have been fine. <laughs> <with Wallet responding. laughs> close, close. Um, very clearly a, a correlation there. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I think that he obviously looked great in this game. In the third period, uh, I mean, just that last seven, eight minutes alone really earned his paycheck there. Nonetheless, the, the second half of the second period, Buffalo kind of came on strong as well. But yeah, that, that second half of the final period was really opportunity after opportunity. And uh, he really held strong, made a lot of good decisions too, just in, you know, like when to ice the puck, when not. That, that's not always a, a guarantee with really any of our goalies at the present moment. Yeah, I, I really liked uh, pretty much everything that he did in this one. Well, I mean, the, the five on four penalty kill with like less yeah. than two minutes left. He had to be on. Yeah, he got a little lucky. Sometimes the puck went where his pad was. He didn't see it. But hey, that's yeah, part there of the was game, one right? specifically where he definitely didn't see it. But hey, he put himself in a position to get it even when right. he didn't see it. So. Right. He, what puck wouldn't have gone gone to his pad if he hadn't been in that spot to begin with as I right. dropped my pen. But yeah, that's that's my difference maker for this hockey game. Scotty, what do you got for me? Yeah, mine's Lucas Raymond. And I think that uh, when we talk about the wings over the last month and a half. Uh, I, I think the first thing you're going to talk about is all of the losing. And then the second thing you're going to talk about is, but Lucas Raymond has stepped up and uh, really, really looked like a darn good hockey player for that entire stretch. And I think that this game specifically, he was everywhere. Obviously the goal so good. Uh, at the beginning of the game, but he was the first goal. Yeah. So um, yeah, he looked fantastic though. That whole line I thought looked really good. Uh, obviously Larkin had a goal as well, but uh, yeah, I thought that razor was really, really sharp throughout this entire game. Yeah. Raymond's goal came 53 seconds in. He made a great read to jump up and intercept the pass that made yeah, two fantastic. beautiful moves to get past uh, forwards who are trying to intercept him in the neutral zone and then just beautiful shot from the top of the circle. And Lucas Raymond's been a breakout player this year. You know, we talked about at the start of the season and we've mentioned this a few times on the pod as well. Like our expectations after his sophomore slump year were a little bit dampened. You know, we were talking about just get back close to the 57 point marker, maybe get cross 60 points like you did in uh, or uh, the 57 point mark, which he had met his rookie season yeah. and then if you could get into a 60 70 point range as a player that's a great year well he has gotten into the 60 point range uh and there's still six games left to build on that what the, one area i did not expect is his goal scoring to take such a a a spike 26 goals and with six goal games left he has an opportunity to reach 30 goals like i knew that he could hit 30 goals but i didn't i don't I didn't think going into the season that he could become be a perennial 30 goal scorer is what I'm trying to say. But sure. now after this season, I'm starting to reevaluate that maybe he can be a consistent 30 goal scorer. And then he had a beautiful assist on Dylan Larkin's feed at uh, Dylan Larkin's goal as well. Larkin's 31st goal of the year that happened on the power play. It was a great cycle. Perron to Raymond down low to Larkin in the bumper. That's exactly how they want to. That's exactly how they write that up. They do two things, cross seam pass, or high or low high, and it worked right. to a T in this game. I mean, even outside of that, right? Like how many two-on-ones was he a part of? How many rushes up the ice was he a part of? How many pockets did he pick in this game? How many board battles did he win or did he get involved in and still manage to come away with the puck? Like he, in this game in particular, showed you every single reason why he is going to be worth the 
eight $8 million contract he's going to earn. I don't think it's going to, I don't know if it's going to be that much, but whatever dollar sign you're going to put on it contract, he's going to earn. And it's going to be a long contract. It might not be eight years, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like six years for Lucas Raymond coming in this off season. Cause he's proven this year in his third season. It's like, okay, last year was a down year. I was adjusting. Well, now I'm adjusted and this is who I am. And I'm only 22. Kid was amazing. Yeah, it's going to be one of the the more frequent and bigger conversations we have this summer, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to ha- take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to move on to our notable performers, our notable performances, whatever it may be. So stay tuned for that in segment two of Lockdown Red Wings. It's almost the end of the NHL season, and the Detroit Red Wings are still fighting to the very end for a playoff spot, exactly where we hoped they'd be at the start of the season. And regardless of where they are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is the number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether or not studs like Lucas Raymond, Dylan Larkin, Patrick Kane, Joe Valeno with the fisticuffs will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given hockey game. To 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Red Wings fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are recapping the 3-1 to Detroit Red Wings win over the Buffalo Sabres. Scotty, in terms of notable performers... I feel like the guys who stood out in this game really did a good job of making them stand out, making themselves stand out. And I think the guy we got to start with here is Mort Sider, right? Like the easy notable performer. So I genuinely think that there was a real argument that Sider could have been a difference maker rather than one of the players we chose. Obviously, I, I think it's it's one of those three or two of those three, I guess, if if we're each picking one. Um, but yeah, Cider had a fantastic game. Uh, you mentioned before we went on air all the block shots that he had uh, in this game. What do you have? Ten, I want to say. Uh, yeah, you're sneezing right now. Okay, cool. Thumbs up. Yeah, ten. So um, it was everywhere, though, man. Like he he was he was everywhere. We finally got the time on ice uh, type of uh, uh, strategy. Is not the right word. My brain is mush. I apologize. But uh, we finally got that game plan. That's the word that. We've been uh, talking about for so long. Yeah, man, he was he was fantastic. And there, you, I mean, we could go play by play, like shift by shift. Really, I mean, if you know, if we had three hours, like he he was he was everywhere, and it felt like every shift he was making an impact play. The, the impact play being put your body in front of the puck. Yeah, and, dive it, in front of a puck. Yeah, he with ten blocked shots, he ties the season high in block shots in a single game. I believe one of those players he's tied with is Chris Tanev. There's another one he's tied with. I don't have it right up in front of me as we talk, but he also takes the league lead in block shots with 205 in the season. I remember yeah, like a wild. month or two ago, I made a graphic because Jake Wallman was like third in block shots, and obviously Wallman had missed time because he got sick and hurt, and now Sherratt stepped into that top pair role. So now Wallman's kind of like teetering where he's at in the lineup. But in that, in that graphic, just on the outside looking in was Cider at 11. So in that month or two since I've posted that graphic, Moritz Cider has blocked so many shots to become the league leader in that category. Yeah. And block shots isn't always like a great thing because namely, if you're blocking a lot of shots in any given game, it means you're not possessing the puck a lot. But I've come to a realization that that's just how the Red Wings play hockey, for better or for worse, a lot of times for worse. They don't have the puck a lot. The Sabres shot the puck a lot in this game. And the second and third period in particular, after the Wings burned the Sabres in the first period, they were excellent. The Sabres really, really pushed in the second and third period. And it took all of Moritz Sider's 27 minutes and 10 block shots and Alex Lyon's phenomenalness behind him. That's not really a word, but we're rolling with it to it. keep this a three to one win. and. As much as we talk about the 37 saves that Lyon made, the 10 saves that Moritz Sider made were just as impactful. So I completely agree with you when you say 
that that is that could be a difference maker. I mean, we talked just this last game against the New York Rangers about how does Moritz Sider have just 20 minutes of ice time? How does Gostas Bear lead the team in ice time? I, I was complaining up and down the microphone here about how the Moritz Sider needs to be getting 25, 27 minutes a night against the Lightning. He got 27 minutes or 25 minutes. They won. Then they they cut him back for the Rangers game and they lost. And I'm not saying, you know, causation correlation type thing, right? But for sure. it does have a huge impact when your best defenseman is out there for another seven minutes of ice time. That is huge. And 25 of those minutes were even strength. Where last game, what was it, 15 minutes were even strength? He played another 10 minutes at even strength in this game. Like that is so important to this team's success. And he is so important to this team's success that, yeah, like notable performer, yes, but like borderline difference maker, absolutely. Well, like more Sider, we he, talk about Lucas Raymond getting yeah. paid. More Sider's going to get paid in the offseason. Yeah, it, it's not, boy, he wasn't. Th there could be more than two. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's not, a, it's not a rule that there could only be two uh, difference makers in, in any given hockey game. Like, obviously, he, he was one. He just wasn't... Uh, one of the ones that we picked. So yeah, obviously we had a fantastic game. Well, and the, the thing too, right? We talk a lot about Cider and his deployments and yes, he did lead the team in defensive zone deployments, but you know who else, what other pair was tied in defensive zone deployments with Cider and Sherratt? Yeah, man. Petrie and Edvinson, who also had a hell of a game. Simon Edvinson, every consecutive game has looked more and more outside of the Carolina Hurricanes game where that pair got torched. They've looked more and more comfortable. And this is another game where I thought they looked good. Petrie also tried to fight somebody. It didn't really work out for him. It quickly ended, but you uh, appreciate yeah. the effort. But both of them looked really good in this hockey game. In fact, I believe they were, yeah, in terms of shot share uh, percentage, second and third on the team. In a, in a game where you were crushed in shot attempts in the second and third period. Barely had the puck. Yeah. Yeah. Impressive. And and we've been obviously Petrie's been a hot topic of conversation for a large majority of the last month and a half of Red Wings hockey. But um Edvinson I thought looked absolutely fantastic. And and yes, I, I agree. I think Petrie looked pretty solid as well. But I, I really think Edvinson looked really, really strong in this game. And that's something that you know, as we get into the end of the season and then whenever the season ends for the wings uh, this summer, like we're going to continue having conversations about what his role is going to be going forward. And I think a lot of people are starting to be really excited and optimistic and understand that he he is here to stay rightfully so. Absolutely. He was he he, he has been such a boost to the back end. I mean, yeah. the defensive pairings again outside the game against Carolina where uh, Edvinson and Petrie suffered greatly that those top the top four has seemed a lot more steady with this mix up with the addition of Edvinson. And, you know, the last Chirac got that double minor, I guess, at the end of the game where he tried to fight Greenway and they yeah. weird penalty divvying up. Who'd they put out there with Cider with a, a six on four penalty kill? Who'd they put out there? Simon Edvinson. It was fun if, to watch too. If that doesn't tell you what this organization thinks of this 21 year old in his rookie season, I guess will next year be his rookie season as well. Cause I don't think he's going to hit that bar for sophomore regardless in his, in what his fifth or sixth game with the Detroit Red Wings. If that doesn't tell you what this team thinks of him as a player. I mean, they clearly have a high, see him in high regard. Yeah. Well, that that's the seeing them on the ice at the same time was just exciting. Cause that's what we've all been talking about for so long. Right. Even if it was just a shift to end the game for a schematic fit, like it was just cool to see. Um, and mm -hmm. it worked. So. Absolutely. Uh, Joe Valeno, huh? Fought Bowen Joey Byron in this game. V and the V is for vicious. I don't have a lot to say positively about his impact on the ice. Uh, he kind of got crushed. That fourth line kind of got crushed uh, yeah. <laughs> in a lot of this game. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Joe There's Valeno in particular there. got crushed in this yeah. game, and he only saw like seven minutes of ice time at even strength because of it. But uh, he got hit hard from behind. Should have been a penalty. Don't know how it was. Dude, by Bowen Byron. literally right in front of Dude. the ref, too. Wow. Like right in front of the ref. I Mind-boggling. 
So he decided to take things in his own hands. And uh, yeah, a beautiful game. Policing he itself kind of beat the crap out of Bowen Byram. Yeah, no, he was he was throwing them, man. He really was. He was he was uh, he was chucking for sure. So I love to see that. And then Patrick Kane got his 19th goal of the season. Another just like Lucas Raymond's goal. Another time where he took a opportunity, took advantage of a poor Buffalo Sabres pass. It was a pass across the ice. Thought his teammate was open. That teammate was changing. And off the yeah. bounce, he picked it up, split the D, and made just a beautiful tucked it home goal. I actually got to see that one live, Scotty, uh, because I was at Comerica Park waiting for the, the hockey game or the baseball game to start, and I found a bar that had the Wings game on the TV. Nice. I got to see that one. I was happy. I was very happy to see that one. And it was a great – I mean, it was the most Patrick Kane goal in, if you've ever seen one. He as well in this game, right? The top six in general. I don't – I mean, technically, that second, the Comfort Sherratt, or the Comfort Cop and Fisher line was listed as the second line, but the Debrinket line was the second line. The Debrinket Canes aren't. Was it really? I, I maybe there were different graphics because the one that I saw pregame was the Zarnik line was line two. The Red Wings, the Red Wings Twitter posted it and said it doesn't oh, matter. Well, it it doesn't no, matter. No, no, no. That yeah, my the graphic I saw was Bally, so maybe just difference between Bally versus the Wings official account, but. Yeah, but regardless, the, those two lines, the Larkin line and the Zarnik line, were buzzing in this hockey game. We got to talk Zarnik. 2C, Austin Zarnik. Jesus. That's where we're at. I mean, not to not to take anything away. I thought he looked great in this game. Yeah. And I, good, I thought the last time he, he centered them, he looked strong. He, he's he got speed. He's got hustle. He's got heart. Like, he's, somebody he's has to have that on that line. Someone to go get the puck and then give it to the guys who are going to do something with it. Right. That's that's and what we've been looking for with that. He line loves forever. doing it too. Yeah. Right. He loves doing it. He loves passing to Patrick Kane. It's his favorite thing. <laughs> he even does it when he probably shouldn't. He will do it under any any circumstance necessary. He is passing that puck to uh, to Kaner. Right. All right. We got to take a quick break. We're just rambling now. We're just riffing about different things we saw in the hockey game. We come back. We're going to clean up our different the rest of our notable performers, and then we are going to talk about the games going on on Sunday and Monday. So stay tuned to segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. I've got to talk to you guys today about eBay, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to take, make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are rapping about the notable performers from this hockey game. We've talked about Larkin, or we've talked about Kane, rather. We've talked about Cider. We've riffed about the second pairing. Who else you got as a notable performer in this hockey game? Well, I, I legitimately, Zarnik was on my oh, okay. list. Um, I, we already kind of had that conversation, so we don't have to go too much else. Uh, too much deeper, but yeah, man, I, I thought that he he was solid in that role, and it's it's wild that this is where we're at when we're making a a playoff push. A guy that wasn't on the roster most of the season is now your two C, but I thought that he he very clearly understands his role on that line, and and I think he did it pretty darn well. He's a he's a uh, a, a an aggressive skater, I'll call it. Not necessarily the fastest guy. Um, but, uh, but, but skates with intent and, uh, is kind of everywhere high, high motor type of player. So yeah, I, I just wanted to give him kind of his flowers just because, you know, that that was something that certainly jumped out the page at everybody when, uh, the lines for well practice this week were announced were this weekend were announced, uh, and then certainly when it carried over into the game as well. So good for, good for Austin Zarnick. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to go from being in the AHL to centering Patrick Kane and Alex to it, has got to be hell of a whiplash. Uh, and it was his 200th NHL game, too. I saw that they posted yeah. that on social media. So that's great for Austin Zarnick. And you're going a long way to securing yourself another NHL contract when you you play well between two guys of that caliber. And uh, Dylan Larkin, we, we've taught we haven't really talked about him in this game. We've talked uh, around him, surrounding him. We talked about what led to his goal. Obviously, he got the 31st 
goal of the season on the power play. But really what stood out with Dylan Larkin in this game, other than the fact that he's the captain and he was absolutely buzzing, uh, face-off circle, he was 15 and four, 15 wins and four losses for a 78.9% win percentage in the face-off circle. Yeah. The dude could not lose a face-off in this hockey game. It was incredible. At one point, I remember they read a stat where it's like Larkin has 13 face-off wins. The rest of the centers combined have 15. Like, yeah. My favorite stat. <laughs> Shout out like, face-off percentage, man. It's the greatest stat ever. Uh, yeah, no, he was, he was still, I mean, just all around, he was really solid, but, uh, that, that was a, that's a huge advantage, obviously, especially, you know, toward the end of the hockey game when we were just icing after icing, after icing, after icing. Uh, right. one of the reasons why is because we kept getting the puck back and, uh, kept winning it in our own zone. So yeah, no, very, uh, very, very solid. And, uh, that certainly helped a lot. Yeah. So in terms of notable performances, you got anything else? I think we have about touched on everything. Um, I, who else? We did. Kane. I I will say, uh, G- Gosses Bear and Mata probably had their best game together in a while. Uh, Mata's yeah, first Mata. game back in the lineup after back to back healthy scratches. Although we did hear reports that he was battling an injury, so that probably led to healthy scratch. Uh, Mata in particular, I thought did a really nice job of preventing zone entries, and he even stepped them in the play a couple times. So I want to shout out yeah. Holy Mata. This is probably the best the defensive core has looked in a long, long time in this game in particular, which is crazy. Well, let me let me walk that back a little bit, because in the second period, there was a lot of def- turnovers in the defensive zone, which is which helped lead to the pressure that the Buffalo Sabres had. Because, again, in the second and third period, it was all Buffalo Sabres. And they, at times, were hanging on for dear life. A lot of timely block shots by the Detroit Red Wings and uh, Alex Lyon being great. But in those moments, I thought that pair looked good. And I thought, overall, the defensive, there was a lot of pressure put on the defense in this game by the amount the Buffalo Sabres were pushing and they proved up to snuff again goaltending helps prove that or hammer home that point a lot when the goaltending bails you out as well uh but yeah it was it was a solid game out of pretty much all three pairs I felt then again you know barely saw Mata and Gosses Bear by comparison it felt like but that for was sure no, but yeah no I, I I don't disagree and I mean offensively really the fourth line was really the only one that uh saw it's play kind of taper off due to performance so absolutely uh around the league scotty we are recording this at 7 46 it's currently the time on um, uh sunday evening so the scores currently capitals are leading the senators two to one in the second period that's really uh i think the devils are still playing too and they're still wild that in it. everyone in this fan base is rooting for the senators for really- for this game for this game <laughs> uh, it's two to one. So that game's still very much in play, but obviously by the time people are listening, they'll know the result. If the Capitals win, they'll be tied in points with the Red Wings and they'll have the second wild card on the tiebreaker of regulation wins. So uh, that's why you need the senators to win this hockey game. And uh, the devils are playing the predators as well, although they are six points back. So not a lot of concern with the devils at this point point. and the win with, against the Buffalo Sabres kind of knocks them out of real contention too, with just a few games remaining. Uh, yeah. They only have four games left, the Sabres. So, yeah, they uh, yeah, really kind of had to go on a, on a crazy heater for sure. Yeah. So, it's really that Washington game you're paying attention to. Now, in terms of Monday games, which is more relevant to the people to win their listening, there's just two games in the NHL. Uh, but one of them matters. The Penguins are going to Toronto to play the Maple Leafs. And currently, the Penguins are one point back of the Detroit Red Wings as of recording this. So a win to, on Monday by the Penguins over the Maple Leafs would then elevate them to the second wild card. So just as quickly as the Red Wings got back in the wild card, they could find themselves the two two places down in the standings if both Washington and Pittsburgh win. So that's why taking advantage when other teams lose is important and that why that Rangers loss stings as well as the all the other losses they've got. And the re- along with March, um, <laughs> along with just all of March, <laughs> along with the entire month of March. Um, yeah. But still destiny in your own hands. You got Pittsburgh and Washington this week. So let's take yeah. care of business. Two huge games. Absolutely. Uh, Scott, you got any final thoughts? I don't think so, man. We ball. We do ball. We're back with a new episode tomorrow. Previewing the game against the Washington Capitals. Uh, monumental game but this one's at home which is gonna help so stay tuned for that same time same place see your team every day every day